Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip and this week it should be a really quick one so 5 minutes to 10 minutes I think and this week we're going to talk about pyro. So a lot of you people asked me how we get the new pyro simulation tools of Cinema 4D 2023.1 into Octane and it's remarkably easy so there's not a lot to it and this is why the tutorial might be very short i won't go over any sim settings inside of the pyro tool there are other tutorials that cover that i'm just telling you how to get your sim inside of octane there's a new version of octane that is the 2022.1 release candidate 2 version for cinema 4d which has the native capability to load in the pyro, but we will go over the workflow in the old and the new version. So let's get started. So without further ado, let's just start with our first pyro simulation inside of Cinema 4D and the current version of Octane, which is the version 2021.1.6 R7. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, here we are. Uh, so to start, let's first make a cube, make this cube a little bit smaller so it fits our screen a little bit better because we are shooting smoke and fire out of it. Let's press shift and C and type in pyro in here. So this is our search and double click on the first entry here, pyro. And this will create a pyro tag on your cube as well as a pyro object where your pyro settings are living. And to see if it's worked, the next thing to do is just to press play. And yes, as you can see, it worked and we are creating some smoke and fire. Great. So how would you get this over to Octane? Now, if I just render in Octane, there's nothing visible here. And this is because maybe there's no light source. So let's create a light source real quick by going to our HDRI and loading our trusted old bathroom scene. And we can see the bathroom scene has loaded just fine, but there's still no pyro. And maybe I don't want to see the toilet in the background here, so let's go ahead and also load a float and make it rather dark, so 0.05 maybe. Here we go. And we don't want to have that as the lighting, but only be visible in the background. So we go to the tag and set it to visible environment. And therefore we have the lighting from the HDRI and the background from the float texture in here. Since Octane doesn't support a pyro natively in this version, we need to bring over the pyro effects to Octane somehow. And actually in the pyro tag, if you go to cache, you can cache this out as a VDB sequence. And if you don't know about VDBs, it's sort of a image texture for 3D voxels. In fluid simulations, as this here with smoke and fire, we are dealing with a grid that has 3D pixels and they're called voxels. And VDB is sort of the texture that can hold that information. Before we simulate, there's a couple of other things I need to uh, show you. So in the object tab here, you can see there are settings where whether you want to have the object properties exported or on, that means they live in a scene or off, that means they only live on the GPU on the graphics card while they are simulating. Now we would need the density and the temperature for our VDB, but we don't need the velocity that would be for motion blur. And right now Octane in this current version doesn't support the motion blur of the vector path that comes out of the simulation. So we can turn it off. Then we go to cache and say cache scene. But before we do that, I want to go to the scene settings here and set the length of the simulation to 100 frames. So we don't wait forever. As we've done that, let's go back to our pyro and let's cache the scene. And this will open up a window here and with our HDRI here, uh, we don't want to save the VDB sequence in the same directory as the HDRI. So let's navigate to our tutorials folder. And I already created a folder that's named cache. 
And in here, we can save our VDBs uh, called simulation scene. We can change the name, but I'm fine with that. And as soon as I click save, the simulation is running and the cache is recorded. So we get a VDB file for every frame of the simulation. So now that we've done that, let's scrub through the timeline. And yes, this is definitely cached, so we can go back and forth through it. But as you can see, Octane still doesn't recognize it. And this is because we are using the Pyro object to load our sequence right now, but we need the native Octane tool to do the same. So there's actually this tool here, uh, that's the Octane VDB volume. If you don't have this strip on top, which I did, with my layout, you can go to objects and find the Octane VDB volume in here under objects. So let's create this and let's link the VDB sequence in here. And you need to calculate the length here. Let's do this and it definitely defines it right by going start frame zero and frame 100. Now there's something going on here, so you can see there's something, but it's rather big. And this is because my scene right now is set to a scale of millimeters. This is because I'm usually working in very small scales and millimeters will fit my working scenarios much better than centimeters or meters. So let's go to the VDB volume here and actually there's an import units scale. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why exactly, we need to set this to DC meters, uh, at least if you are working in the same scale base as I am. Otherwise, you would need to fiddle around with the scale a little bit more until it fits. As soon as I have done that, you can see the tiniest amount of smoke rising from the cube. Uh, there's definitely something going on here, but it's very weak and we need to set up the medium. This has nothing to do with a crystal glass or something. This is the volume of the scene. You can find two buttons here and those are presets for either fog or either fire. And since we had fire, let's call this preset by clicking on it. Again, not much has changed here. So let's dive into the medium. Mostly we will care about the density, the volume step length and emission scattering and absorption. We will leave the displacement out for now, which is a way to bring in detail into volumes by displacing it sort of similar like a polygon displacement, but with volumes. So the reason why this looks so thin is sort of the density and the stack length. Since my scene is very small, you can make this much more accurate by increasing the step length. Right now it's set to four. And those values are real world scale. So remember that the cube is set to five. That means one step inside of the volume is the length of almost the cube. And this is very big. So we want to get more detail into there by going into the step length and shorten it by a lot. So let's make it 0.02. And you can already see this helps a lot to get the smoke looking more dense. Now, if that's not dense enough for you, you can even increase the density here to maybe 500. And then you can see now we have some smoky stuff growing out of our cube. You can play around with the absorption and scattering color a little bit. Um, so absorption would make our smoke a little bit darker or lighter, depending on how bright the color here is. So if I make this white, you can see now we have a new pope. Just kidding, we have a white smoke. And then if you make this dark, then of course there's more absorption happening. And the same with the scattering. So we can also adjust a little bit of our density of the smoke because the scattering is basically multiplied by the density. So if we put that to white, we get a lot more dense smoke and therefore also more scattering happening. And if we put that to completely black, we don't get any scattering and we are just left with the absorption, which is unrealistic, by the way. So let's set the scattering to 0.75. Here we go, to get a grayish smoke. And let's set the absorption to 0.1. 
and you can play around with this a little bit more maybe this smoke is too light so we need to get the scattering even lower so let's make this 0.2 now we have a dark grayish smoke right like this now let's talk about the emission here the emission is rather dark so what we need to do is find a way to make this brighter so the emission here is driven by the same emission settings that you have in your light source. So you can easily just make it brighter. But it's all one color and it doesn't look very nice. So what you also can do is go in here, which is the volume gradient and therefore decide what your colors of the density of the fire is. So if you're only seeing red right now, that means maybe your max value is too large because um, you're sampling all the values in here. So if I make it smaller, you can see some of the yellow tint of the fire is popping up here. And the smaller I make it, the more you can sample from the higher values. And this max value is in there because the density values in the VDB are different dependent on what you're simulating. So you can just arrange them here in a manner that you love the output. Also, you can go into the gradient and load a different preset, for example, the heat preset, which more closely represents how fire might look. So let's make this maybe a value of 1.5. And then, of course, it's very dark, so let's make the intensity even higher, like this. And now you can see you have a representation that sort of is similar like what we had in our viewport before with the pyro. Let's turn this on again. Maybe the pyro is a little thinner on top and the fire is a little bit more pronounced, but this is only detailed settings in the VDB here with the densities and so on. You can go ahead and create those by your own. Now let's have a quick look in how this would work with a newer Octane version. And spoiler, it's much more simple. Welcome back. So what I did was close Cinema 4D and exchange the Octane plugin from the old one to the newest one, which is 2022.1 Release Candidate 2. And this one adds support for a native pyro rendering inside of Octane. So what we need to do is get rid of the VDB volume here. And within our pyro here, you can see it's active, but it's not showing. This is sort of a bug in Cinema 4D right now. So right now you can see my scene scale is millimeters and somehow the pyro tag is loaded in the standard scale, which is set in centimeters. So um, I don't know what's going on exactly, but we can fix this by scaling down the pyro object by a factor of 100. Here we go. So now it's looking like it should. If I render this, nothing's going on. And this is because the information is passed on usually by a tag. And this is no different. So let's go to extensions, Octane, and add an Octane object tag. And as soon as I do that, you can see the pyro is showing up in the viewport. Let's go over some settings here. So if I click on the tag, you can see the particle rendering is set to voxel. And now we have a new volume here. And this is a new thing in Octane 2022, which standardizes the settings for volumes. This is an initiative that spans over Redshift, Arnold, and some other renderers, including Octane, to standardize settings for materials as well as volumes, so the users aren't as confused because of different settings in different renders. So let's dive in to the standard volume and you can see we have now a little bit of a different setting scheme going on here, but basically it's the same. So we want to get our volume step length a little bit smaller. So let's add a zero here. And then we want to get our density a bit greater because in the viewport it looks a bit denser than here in the live viewer. So let's maybe set this to 500 and this gets us somewhat there. Now, there's some 
differences here, but in general, you can play around with the scattering, the transparency, and the emission to get the right look here. So right now our smoke is looking very dark here. So to get this a little bit better uh, represented like in a viewport, you might either set down the scatter color to get it even more darker and less scattery, or also uh, make the transparency a little bit lighter. So something like this. And you can see now it matches pretty nicely. The only thing that doesn't match is the fire right now. To fix this, you can play around with the temperature settings down here. In the new standard volume medium, the temperature is read out as a black body emission. That means the color comes from a Kelvin scale, which is more realistic than relying on gradients, what we did before. So let's try and figure out what we need to set here by going with extreme values and set the black body intensity to 500. And it turns out this isn't even that extreme because it looks quite similar to what we needed. Last but not least, uh, there is a auto scale intensity, which I found doesn't do a lot. So I'm not sure if it's even uh, connected to the core right now. So I just leave it off. This is all for today. Again, this was a very quick one. It was a little bit longer than anticipated, again, as always. But I hope that shows that dealing with pyro is much more easy than you would think. And it's not a big deal at all. Next week, I am thinking about doing a tutorial either about Gryptomat or render layer where you can separate your shadows from any object to make, for example, commercial renderers where the object is on a completely plain white background. So please let me know in the comments what you prefer so I can prepare the tutorial and do it. Or if you have a completely different idea, also let me know. Maybe your idea is even better than what I have in mind. That leaves me to thank you once more for staying with me that long. And I say, have a good week and happy igniting. Bye.